everyone, Jason Tripp here for another Common Ground Cafe board game tutorial. Now, if you're like me, you grew up playing board games, and many of the games I grew up playing was you simply chuck some dice, see what the dice say, and then move the piece accordingly. Uh, played a lot of racing games like that. One game I recall playing growing up was a horse racing game called Win, Place, or Show, where you weren't just chucking dice and moving, but you'd actually bet on which horse you think would win the race, and then you'd have the colors of those horses in your hand, and you tried to push the horses across the finish line you bet on at the beginning of the game. Well, today we're looking at a game very similar to that one called Downforce. It's by Restoration Games, and what Restoration Games specializes in is re-implementing old games such as win place or show which is very similar to this game it's a, a formula one racing game which involves a whole lot more than just chucking dice and moving according there's a bit of strategy to it so let's take it to the table i'll show you how it works start your engines and join me there Okay, welcome to Downforce. Here is the setup for the Downforce game. I should uh, let everyone know right out of the gate that this uh, beautiful board is in fact double-sided. So with the game, you don't get one, but you get two possible racetracks to use. Today we're using uh, this side of the board, which I'm pretty sure is a simulation of the Monaco Grand Prix. And so here we are, let me explain the setup and the basic flow and mechanics of the game. First thing you want to do in the game is you want to uh, shuffle up these speed cards. You get one deck of speed cards in the game and a smaller deck of these six power cards come with the game. As well, you've got these cardboard tokens that correspond to each of the six colored cars. You can just set the cars out uh, on the board to start before distributing the speed cards to each player. And we're simulating a four player game today. You'll want to remove uh, these number eights. Each color of the six colors has one number eight card. Take those out, put them off to the side and then deal out the speed cards to each player. Equal amount of cards to each player. Uh, any extra cards can be discarded for the game. Once the cards have been dealt and everything has been separated, the game will begin. The game takes place over two phases. The first phase of the game is the auction phase, during which time we're going to auction off the six colored cards to the players. And the second phase of the game is the race itself, where players will play their speed cards. And on each of these speed cards, you'll see a number of stripes with corresponding uh, colors and numbers. So for example, in the game, if I were to play this card, I would get to move the yellow car first, six spaces on the board. Then I would move the red car, four spaces on the board. Then I would move the black car, two spaces on the board. I'll talk a little more about movement in a couple of minutes, but I want to explain the auction phase, which is the starting point of the game. During the auction phase, each player will have the opportunity to own one or more of these six color cars. This is why you remove these number eights because you use these for the auction. You shuffle these cards up, put them face down. You also shuffle these six uh, power cards, put them face down on the board as well. And then the action phase commences by flipping over one of the cars as well as flipping over one of these special ability power cards as well. Uh, that is public knowledge to all the players that gets put on the board. And the first car to be up for the auction, in this case, will be the green car. So at this time, all the players will have been looking at their hand. The idea is you want to uh, bid high on the colors that are most plentiful in your hand. So in this case, I've only got three green in my hand. I've got four yellow that are pretty high. I've also got some orange. I've got a little bit of a mix. So uh, I'm somewhat interested in the green car, but it's not the best car for me per se. So I might want to take this card out of my hand. And because it's a two green, I'd be willing to bid two million dollars on the green. So I would put that face down. Every other player will do likewise. And then we'll all flip over our card at the same time. Uh, whoever has the highest green would win the auction for that particular color. Uh, they would, if, if I were the one to win that, that car, only bidding two, then whoever wins the car, they would write the auction price beside the corresponding color 
on this score pad here. Each player will get one of these score cards uh, that they'll have in their possession. So pencils or pens uh, are necessary for this game as well. So you, the, whoever wins the auction for each corresponding uh, colored car would write the amount that they bid on on the auction price under the auction price uh, column on their scorecard and that will be removed from their end game scoring. It's an initial sort of investment in the game. Once all of the cars have been auctioned off, the race will commence. But I should uh, explain also these power cards. When you, when you win an auction, not only do you get access to that number eight card that goes in your hand, but you also get a unique power or special ability card as well. There's six of them. For example, this one says unpredictable. If you play a card with a wild on it, you may use that wild for a color that is already on the card. Now some of these cards, this one in particular in my hand, it has a wild card. Wild cards are always white and you can use that wild card to be any color you want to be. The only restriction is that because there's a red already on this card, I can't use the wild card to be red. However, if I have that unpredictable power in my possession and I'm the owner of the red car, I can use both the two and the five in this case to be red. There are a number of different power cards that are all self-explanatory. I won't go through them all today, but winning an auction wins you that car as well as a special power. If you own two or more cards, you will get two or more special power cards. However, you only get to keep one for the course of the game. So you have to decide which one you'd like to retain and which one you want to discard. So the auctions continue. If there's ever a tie in the bidding for the auction, it's the player that has the most unique striped colors on the card that breaks the tie. If it's still a tie, the player who has the most natural colors without a wild card uh, wins the auction. Once all the cars have been auctioned off, the race will commence. Everybody must win at least one color in the auction. So if it comes down to one color, for example, if the yellow car is the last and I haven't won an auction yet and no one else can bid against me, I will automatically win the auction for the yellow. I simply find the lowest yellow color in my hand, which in this case is this one, and I would get it for a discounted cost of one. That's the auction phase. Now let me, uh, let me walk you through how the race phase goes. Okay, so having completed the auction phase now, sort of set up the game for the race phase. We sort of simulated the auction here. And we're again, we're simulating a four player game. So we've given each player the colors that correspond to the cars they've purchased in the auction. So I'm the owner of the yellow and the orange car. Player to my right has the green car. Player to my left owns the black car. And uh, Megan sitting across from me has the blue and the red car. Uh, what you do after the auction is you randomly assign uh, the starting spots. You just draw the cars sort of secretly out of a bag or however you want to choose to do it. And whichever car has the pole position here, in this case uh, it's the black car. Whoever owns the black car is the starting player in the game. So uh, we've already sort of dipped into the hands and we're trying to simulate a round or two here so player to my left Megan if you can help me the top card will be played here so black has chosen to play this card and so here's a typical card starting at the top and working your way down this card means that uh, the player who played the card will move the black card six spaces followed by moving the green card four spaces a wild two spaces and a red one now the wild can be any color but it can't be a color already on the card so in this case it can't be black or green or red and you've also got to keep in mind of course every time you play a car your special powers that you attained in this case the the player to my left has the aggressive power it says if you play a card with your car at the top of the card you may move that car one additional space so because the black car is at the top of this card. Um, this person is allowed to move that car not simply six spaces, but can move it an additional space, moving it seven spaces. So Megan, why don't you uh, move these accordingly, starting with moving the black seven. And then uh, green moves four on that card as well. 
Now a color of your choosing, not red, green, or black, moves two. And then red gets a bump of one. So that completes the player to my left's turn. Now player number two chooses from their hand a speed card. So Megan is choosing to play this card. Okay, being again, being the owner of blue, she wants to give blue a boost. So blue goes six bases. I should mention too that a legal move in this game is moving your car forward or moving your car diagonally forward. Uh, you can never move your car sideways or backwards. Okay, so orange now moves four spaces on this card. Now again, a wild card, um, not on the card, so not blue, not orange, or not yellow. Perhaps you would want, obviously you'd want to move red because you own the red car, so red gets to go too. And yellow moves one space. So that completes uh, your turn. Put that in discard pile. Now the player to my right would search through their deck of speed cards. And in this case, green, well, green won't choose to play this one. We were going to say green would play this one. Here's a good, good chance to explain a rule. If green wanted to play this eight card, normally that would be a, a great idea to get ahead. But you see that the black car, in this case, controls the bottleneck. There's only one lane there. So in this case, green would only be able to move two spaces, and then they would have to stop their turn immediately. If there's no room to maneuver around the cards in front of you, you have to stop your move immediately. So in this case, that wouldn't be a good move for green. So green would look through their deck and try and find another alternative. So perhaps in this case, Green would say, well, until black's out of the way, I can't move. So Green might say, okay, I'm gonna make that three wild black and the two wild green. So black would move three and green would move two, allowing green a little more, no, oh, we're here, allowing green a little more space on future turns. And then comes around to me, and I might now choose owning orange and yellow to play this card, and my special ability is strategic. It says if I play a card with all six colors on it, and I've chosen a card with all six, I can ignore one color on that card. So I'm definitely going to want to move, uh, if you can move orange six spaces, and then yellow five spaces. So in this case, oh, stop right there, yeah. So where was it to start here? Yeah, so in this case, I would move one and then I would cut across here, two, three, four, five. Now, this is where, this was a smarter play than I thought on my my behalf. Blue gets four, but because yellow is blocking, blue can only move one. So blue has to end blue's turn there. Red gets a full three. Green would normally get two, but is blocked as well. And I'm going to ignore, with my strategic card, I'm gonna ignore black, so I'm not gonna give black the one on the card as well. So that's one round of the game. Uh, the game continues until all of the cards have made it all the way around the track to the finish line. You will see, however, on the board, you'll see these three yellow lines. And I want to explain that because this is an interesting part of the game. As soon as one colored car goes past the, the yellow spot, the game pauses temporarily, and each player has an opportunity to bet. You'll see on the scorecard here, there's three uh, betting columns that correspond to the three yellow lines throughout the course of the game. Uh, so bet one, what happens is we pause the game, and each person secretly bets on a car they think will win the race at that point in the race. They don't have to be the cars that you own. They can be any car. You simply put an X or a check mark on that spot. And if those car, the car you bet on, one car for each bet, they can be the same car all the way along or they can change as the complexion of the race changes. At the end of the game, uh, if you correctly guess a car that finishes in the top three, you get the corresponding payout below the three bets. 
So the game continues around and around. You keep playing cards in your hand, moving the cards accordingly, uh, bearing in mind the rules restrictions for moving, also bearing in mind and trying to maximize on your power cards. Uh, once all cards have been played or all cars cross the finish line, whichever happens first, um, you finish the game and uh, work out the final score. The final score is a combination of your racing total so your racing payout, if, you, if for example, let's say my orange car uh, finished first, I would get 12 million, but unfortunately my yellow car, because I was so focused on orange, finished last, I would get 12 plus zero, so I would put 12 in the racing total. The betting total corresponds to how much money you made correctly betting throughout the course of the race, and then you would subtract your auction total, the amount that you paid for uh, your cars at the outset of the game. Whoever has the most total winnings at the end of the game is the winner. And that is how basically you play Downforce. Let's go back up top and I'll give you a few final thoughts on what I thought about the game. Okay everybody, final thoughts for Downforce, which last year I did sort of a top 10 favorite games and this one uh, cracked the top 10. This is uh, my favorite racing game. Uh, there's just enough strategy and tactics going on, but it's light enough that it's good for a variety of uh, gamer enthusiasts, whether you're into gaming or you're new to the gaming world. Uh, this is one of my go-to games when I want to introduce someone to a game uh, beyond some of the old school games that I grew up with, where it's simply roll some dice and move somewhere. This adds some elements. It adds the, the auction phase, which is interesting. There's a little bit of uh, strategy right up front about you know, how much do I want to spend? What do I want to buy? Uh, I just love the theme, though. I, I love the theme. I love the fact there's uh, multiple tracks, too. In the base game, you get two tracks. Um, there is a, an expansion I want to mention, too, that's called Danger Circuit, and we have that here at the Common Ground Cafe, which adds two more tracks. And so that gives there's four tracks and it gives some extra power cards as well so really sort of enhances the theme I appreciate the theme I really do feel like you're sort of immersed in the world of Formula One there as you're uh, playing those cars and navigating those car the cars around the track and the tight spots uh, the theme really uh, comes alive Aesthetics, uh, the artwork is top notch. Uh, I love how each board, each track, you just saw the one track that looks like Monaco in the uh, tutorial we showed you, but all four of the tracks, the two in the base game, the two in expansion, are really unique. Uh, the aesthetic value of, of, of the artwork is wonderful, it's top notch. Uh, it's one of the games where uh, if you purchase this game, you may want to consider getting some plastic sleeves for the cards. I find that we play this game quite a bit and you're often got uh, sticky fingers on the cards so it's a good game to sleeve but uh, the component quality is 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 uh, is well done and Restoration Games usually does a good job with their uh, their quality of their components and pieces. Uh, the replayability, I think there's, there's high replayability in this game. Um, each time you play is a unique experience. Again, if you change the, the track or you're diff playing with a different game group or a different player count, it always seems to play out a little differently. So the game is very replayable. The game length on the box, it says the game is 30 to 45 minutes. That's about right. It could be a touch longer if you're playing with six players and you're playing uh, with people for the first time. It might drag a little bit longer, but it seems like an appropriate game length, even for those that don't like long games. It's engaging. There's not a lot of downtime. People are taking their turns. And the nice thing I like about this game is even when you're waiting for your turn, when somebody else takes a turn, it might affect your car. So you're, you're, you're tuning in, you're paying attention, even if it's not your physical turn because of the nature of the game. Uh, the ease of play, eight plus, my eight year old, eats this up no problem I've taught this game to children ages probably five and six years old up as long as they have some basic understanding of numbers and reading uh, there's not a lot of text to read in this game it's easy to teach it's easy to get to the table for all age and it's an ideal family game uh, I say the uh, sweet spot for this game is um, at least four players uh, Two and three is a little light, I find. It's nice to have four or five. Six gets pretty tight on the board. Uh, I think four or five is a sweet spot, but it does play well at any player count. And again, back to the tactics and the strategy a little bit. Um, you know, I like that there's enough depth to this game, 
but it's not too time consuming. It's not a brain burner by any stretch, uh, but we're not simply playing a card and moving a car. There is some thinking to do, like when, what, what space do I want to control? I want to make sure I get control of this bottleneck. When do I want to get rid of a card of somebody else's color? Oh, they can't move very far. They're boxed in, so it's a good time to get rid of a, a high number on a color that I don't own that car. So there is some thinking going on. There is some strategy. I think, when do I want to play my number eight? When do I want to do my boost? I only have one time play on that card in the game. So there's a, there's a lot of thinking and trying to play the right cards at the right time and even the betting. Do I want to do I want to bet on the same color all three times throughout the game or do I want to sort of hedge my bets and bet on different cars? Do I want to bet on my own car? Do I want to bet on someone else's car? How much money do I want to pay? How much is too much for the initial auction? So there are there is some thoughts, there is some strategy going on. Um, one thing I do recommend, I'm not sure how, if I mentioned this in the playthrough, is uh, uh, the cards. It comes with uh, probably you know, hundreds of these uh, little paper cards. Uh, what we've done here in our copy is we've laminated six of them, which really all you need is six of them. You distribute these with dry erase markers. That saves on a lot of extra paper and stuff taking up the box. So you might want to consider that if you pick this one up. But if you want to try it out, it's uh, one of many games we have here at the Common Ground Cafe. That's Downforce. Highly recommended. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time.